gonna just go in live. Hey y'all, I am James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're talking about finger joints or box joints or they actually go by a bunch of different names, but they're dovetails without pizzazz. I guess. <laughs> uh, I did a live on this one several years ago um, and I don't know why, but recently I've been getting several questions about it. So uh, rather than just constantly sending the link back to people, I figured let's do another live on it because I like occasionally doing different joint, uh, doing the same joint another time years later because sometimes I do it a little bit differently. It's kind of fun to compare and contrast. Uh, so if you are watching this for the first time, we do a live every Tuesday and uh, we do the first few minutes or a little update of anything that's special that's happening in the Wood by Right world. Um, but if you are watching this recorded, down in the description down below, I have all of the timestamps with all the questions that are asked. So you can kind of read through those and jump around if you want to. Um, and if you are watching this live, then go ahead and throw your questions in the chat and Sarah will collate them and, uh, and get it out. Um, and so, yeah, Sarah likes to throw things at me when I talk too much and need to answer a question. I haven't thrown anything to you in like a year. It's been longer than that. You should, you should pick that back up because it's I've been because starting to talk you always more. put yourself between you and the camera. <laughs> and we know who's more important. <laughs> yes. Duck to James's face, no problem. Duck to the camera, that costs money. Um, now I can remember where I was at. <laughs> the basement. Yeah, um, I, uh, they just sent out the notice for the peach meet in Georgia, uh, which is one of the largest tool meets in the South. It's just outside of Alabama in uh, Madison, Georgia, if I remember, remember, just outside of, not Alabama. Um, come on, what's the big city? Atlanta. Atlanta, there we are. Madison, Georgia. <laughs> Uh, and then there's another one coming up in York, Pennsylvania that just announced. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to make the peach meet this year. I do like going to that one, um, but uh, it just it's running into other things. I'm going to be down in um, I'm going to be down in Atlanta um, like the next week at uh, um, WorkbenchCon. So if you're coming to that, looking forward to seeing you. But yeah, let's uh, jump in. What is a, a finger joint? Um, a finger joint is well these they they look like fingers and. They, the downside to them is that it can come apart in both directions. It's not locked in one way or the other. Whereas a dovetail, it's locked in one direction and can only come out in one direction. Uh, with these, there's a lot more flexibility to it and they're, they're kind of a weaker joint. Uh, the big benefit to these is that they are very easy to cut with power tools. You put that on a table saw or several other types of saws, you can cut square lines really quickly and easily. And so um, finger joints are, are great for power tools. The problem is with hand tools, uh, it takes the exact same amount, if not a little bit more to make these than it does make dovetails because you're gonna be doing a lot of the same steps you do with dovetails. So with hand tools, a lot of times you want to make dovetails because they're more cool, aren't they? Um, and they take the same amount of work. So why make finger joints? Um, and the, an the answer is sometimes finger joints just have a particular look. And one of the things I like is when I do them pillowed like this with the exact same size, kind of that checkerboard pattern. It has a specific look to it um, that I kind of enjoy. And so I've done that for a couple projects. It's not something I do all that often, but every now and then that's the aesthetic I want for it. Um, and so on this one, we're also gonna be doing the, the pillowed look just like this one. Um, <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm getting tired. So I wanna go to sleep. What? <laughs> you <sing it. laughs> Pillowed. They're, they're oh, I was like, yes, I did have to go back to work. I am tired. Oh, <laughs> um, there's something else I was just about to say. I don't remember. Oh, the other question that you're going to get a lot is that these are a weaker joint because they can come apart in multiple directions. So you could have your door, tr door trunk, your drawer front rip right off. Um, and in all honesty, once you glue them up, they are just as strong as a dovetail because the glue is what's holding it together. Uh, they're, they're not going to fail on you any more than a drawer um, unless you're looking at like the long term. I want to build furniture lasts a hundred years. Well, then you might want to think about dovetails. Uh, but in all honesty, um, your grandkids, they're not going to want your furniture. <laughs> so um, don't worry about it. I feel that on a deeply personal level. <laughs> <laughs> but when I, when I grew up with my, my parents, uh, one of the first big things my dad made in the wood shop was a dining room table and chairs. And uh, the, the argument between me and my brother growing up is who would get the dining room chairs. And it came down to I would get the, the china cabinet and Jason would get the dining room table and chairs. And now that I'm older, I'm like, 
I, I don't know if I want the dining room. Not, not, not that they made a problem, but I'm going to make my own. So, <laughs> so um, let's make this. Uh, first thing we want to do is lay out on this. Now, these are three and a half inches wide. Um, and so the easy thing to do would be to make them half inch in size. Uh, but then you would have three quarter by half inch. Um, I could make them uh, three quarter by three quarter. Um, but then I would have, I would have a two, two, and then a half inch one. And so at that point, I'm like, mm, okay, I have the decision on this. Do I make four of them square and one of them not? Do I spread them all out and make them equal amounts? Um, or do I change things up? And so this is one of the, the points, even with dovetails, it kind of comes out. Um, but in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them odd sizes. Um, so I'm going to actually make, um, I'm going to make them, uh, let's see, it'll be three quarter, three quarter, three quarter, and then the two in the middle, I'm going to make whatever is left over. Um, and the nice thing about that is if you're making these with power tools, usually they're going to be the same size all the way across because it's really easy to have a jig that goes pop, 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 pop. Um, and if you make them um, odd, in other words, big one, little one, big one, little one, that's a little bit harder to do with uh, most methods of doing with power tools. Um, any questions before I really jump in? Make sure that's set up. Here Not again. necessarily related to what you're talking about right now. Okay. So first thing we need to do is actually um, set up a marking gauge. So just like with dovetails, we need to mark the depth stop on here. And I actually want to make these pillowed. So what I need is the measurement from here to here needs to be the same thickness as the board that will be intersecting it. But then I want to add on a little bit more that will be sticking out for that pillow. So I'm going to find out it's about that thickness. And then I'm going to add on a little bit more. How much should I add on? Eh about an eighth inch-ish. I'm not really caring about what it is exactly. I'm just going to add on about that much. So then we're going to go around these. And that's the nice thing about making a pillowed joint is you don't have to worry about the exact depth if they stick out past each other a little bit. And that's not a problem. And you can do the same thing with dovetails, um, but pillowed dovetails are not quite as common. Um, I don't know why, but uh, hey, at least in my book they aren't. So we got this, now we want to do all of the layout on top. And put it into the vise. Move this around a little bit. Get you guys a better view. Um, and I'm going to grab my dividers because they make life so much easier. Uh, where did we put them? There we are. And I'm also going to grab a ruler. A ruler! You may notice that I'm using a different marking knife tonight. Um, and this is one that I made from a Tay Tools kit. Um, and I'm using this one because I can't find mine. <laughs> so we're going to come in here and I'm going to lay out. I want to come in three quarter, so we have a square one. And I want to come in from the other end, three quarter. And then I want to put three quarter somewhere in the middle. So in this case, this is three and a half inches across, so that means I need an inch and three quarter. That's the middle. And so then I need to go three eighths off of either side of that. Uh, so let's go two, three, and one, two, three. You gotta love the system. And then just to make sure, I'm gonna come in with my dividers and I'm gonna set those up. Because I find that marking off of the ruler or tape measure isn't quite as accurate as I want it to be. So if I set this up, I know that all of my pins are gonna be the exact same. And there, there's my first problem. Um, I went to the wrong mark. I want them to be the same length as this board is wide. So this one, set on there, run in a dimple. Come in from the other side, run in a dimple. And then these two lines should be, and those two lines are exactly where I want them to be. So there, we've got three quarter, whether that be half, three quarter, half, three quarter. So let's mark these out. I'm going to take my knife and put it into the dent bowl that we just created, slide the square up against it, and cut down. And then I'm going to repeat that for all five of these. Two, or all four. There's five fingers, four cuts. And I'll rotate on that last one because there isn't quite enough meat out here for it to be out on the end. The other thing I'm going to do on this one is normally, at this point, I'm going to grab the saw, put it on here, 
and then I'm just going to angle the saw to be whatever I want it to be. Um, but in this case, I want to actually just cut straight down. So I could just look at them and um, eyeball, and I could look at the reflection on here. You can see if I lean it over this way, the reflection falls down the other way. If I bring it back to 90 degrees, now the, the reflection looks like it just continues straight through the board. If I lean it this way, then it's starting to lean up. So I could look at the reflection and get a pretty good idea. But I've got a square knife here already. I'm just going to put the knife into that line and mark down. And doing this just makes one more chance. And so I'm going to set the saw up with the reflection. And then being able to eyeball the line just guarantees yourself a bit of belt and suspenders going on. Now, I'm also going to be cutting on the inside here. I want to keep these three exactly three quarter by three quarter. So on this one, I'm going to cut over in here. And I'm just going to establish the cut, check my mirror, and cut down the line. Right down to the depth. One done, three more to go. You also notice I'm cutting right on the line. I'm putting the very edge of the sawtooth on that line. And I like to make it so that I don't have to do any trim up. I would like to make it so that it's clean off of the saw. Is that going to happen? Not always. Sometimes I'm going to come back and I'm probably going to come back with a file and clean it up a little bit. But Usually, when you have gaps appearing in your joint, it's not from the saw work, it's from the chiseling later coming back down to it. So if you can hit it on the saw, that fixes a lot of problems um, that you're not going to run into later. Now I'm going to grab me a hold fast and a chisel. Any questions while I set this up? Um. That good, really? Okay, cool. They're, they're not necessarily related to the top. Well, go ahead and give it to me. Okay. Alex asks, I tried black Starbond CA glue for filling cracks and knots and like it so far. Is there much difference between premium CA glue and generic CA glue? Starbond claims a high impact rubber formula. No. Um, yeah, there will be micro differences in it, but for woodworking and our average application, no. There, there's no functional difference between CA glues. Um, I mean, there will be technical differences, but reality, no. Um, yeah, I did a, a video about a year or two ago showing um, different glues and sawdusts, sawdusts, sawdusts filling gaps. Um, it's not my favorite method, but it works. Lots of people likes it. So now we're going to come in here and chisel out the waist. You might notice everything I've done here so far is basically the exact same as we do with dovetails. And it's going to continue to be that because they're just dovetails. Rather than having a 90 degree angle, rather than having a, a splayed angle, they're 90 degrees. And so I'm going to set this in there. There's my knife wall. I'm going to move it a little ways away from that knife line. You didn't mark with X's? Yeah, probably should. <laughs> you laugh at me. <laughs> but I'm married to you. <laughs> yes. And then I'm going to come in and pair them back. And in this case, I'm seeing that this one is bigger than that one by about a sixteenth of an inch. Maybe a little bit more. Um, so my layout was a bit rushed. And I did not uh, check that exactly. And I know some people are going to ask, I am working in poplar. Why poplar? Because I had a scrap of it. I was going to say, is that from my bench? Well. Um, this may have been a scrap from the bench. Poplar is a really good practice wood. It is relatively easy. But it is still very sub, um, very, um, it has a problem with grain direction if you don't treat it right. Um, but it's, it pushes easily. And so I, like, I really don't need to be using the chisel for doing this pair out. But I'm going to because I can. An important super chat question. Oh, and oh I'm what's that? Hopefully unprepared. Gary Leonard wants to know how is your blister? <laughs> the important yeah. question. Some, of, some people are going to be wondering. I have. Uh, here, see if you can see that on there. I got a pretty nice little blister using a card scraper the other day. I ran it for quite a long time, 
without using the thumb saver. So, oops. <laughs> but yeah, it's a it's a it's a big one. It's not a blood one, but it's just kind of gets in the way. But I haven't popped it because Good I have a job. nurse as a wife. It's like Luke and I were like, you should just accidentally pop it. Just accidentally pop it. So what's the mom joke? What do you call a dish made with beans and onions? Beans and onions. What? Tear gas. <laughs> <laughs> yup. <laughs> I was thinking something like cover flipper or... Cover flipper? <laughs> what? Well, that's why I pull the covers over on you. And... <laughs> but the, the nice thing is she dishes it back, folks. And uh, No secrets, guys. No secrets. <laughs> 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 all right so we went down on this side and we've chiseled down i went back and i hit right on that line now we're going to flip it over and i'm leaving this little bit here just to support those pieces so they don't accidentally break off early put that back on Ooh, wrong hammer for that oh well um and then i'm going to do the exact same thing again stay a little ways away from the line tap in There's always something bouncing on here. I had a question this week about where I chop on the bench. And I tried to chop over top of my leg. Wow, that went through. I got my, my bench leg right here. Um, and so I try to chop over that. It gives it the least amount of vibration. Actually, I'm going to come back in and clean this one up. Poplar is nice. Um, I can chop anywhere on the bench. And I generally don't actually feel the difference anywhere on the bench with, with my bench. Um, but I will notice that things rattle more if I put it in other places. In other words, I'm making the bench vibrate more. And I may not feel it, but I'll hear that ruler vibrating on things. I mean, I'll, I'll still hear it here, but uh, I'll hear it other places too. Here we go. So, now, whoop, not that one. Now we've got our first set of fingers. I'm going to look at these, and I'm going to hit them a little bit with a file. Um, and if they need a little bit of cleanup work, rather than um, rather than coming out with a chisel, I like to use a file um, because I'm just taking off little bits. And the smaller the bits you take off, the less chance you're going to create a gap because this is the point at which gaps are created. And so we're going to flip that. And just come here to the file and I'm just gonna then I've got this one um, I ground down the edge on here so I actually have a safe side so when I'm rubbing here I'm not going to grind into the bottom and I'm just getting off any fuzzies anything that's sticking up a little bit and that'd be good there so now I want to create those into there and at this point, we're going to do it just like we would with the dovetail, um, which is put it on here, and I'm going to grab my block plane. Where'd my block plane go? It's hiding. Which oh, wait. No, Melody stole my block plane. I was like, which one are you looking for? And my marking knife. Look at that. <laughs> hey, I found my good marking knife. Now, Melody has been doing more projects in the shop. Um, here in Scene, Melody has her own channel uh, called Melody's Workbench. Um, Melody's Workbench, and uh, she does projects on there. So if you want to watch a 12-year-old girl figuring out woodworking um, and YouTubing at the same time, uh, it's her goal to actually turn that into a business. So if you go and subscribe and say hi, um, she will be over the moon. So we're going to set this on here, and I'm going to grab my good marking knife and do exactly what I did before. Light, medium, hard, light, medium, hard. And when I line this up, I'm actually eyeballing down in here, and I want to see that the back of this is right on the edge of that board. And then I'm also going to be feeling the outside edges here, because uh, the important thing is that the bottom or top, whichever is your reference, is flush here and then that the back of this is flat up against the back of this and so the easiest way for me is that let it out so I can see that gap in there 
and then sl slowly slide it forward until that gap disappears all the way across. So now I got my marks on there. And at this point, this is the important one. Because if I cut on the wrong side of the line here, it's not a problem because I haven't cut this side. But now that I've cut this side, I have to make sure I'm on the right side of the line here. So we're going to lay those out. Bring this in. Raise it up. And we're going to do the same thing here. Mark down. Poplar, so easy to work with. I'm usually doing it in white oak, which is a rather painful wood to work with. But poplar is... It's a fun one. And at this point, it's kind of fun because they're all 90 degrees. We're doing the exact same thing we did before. <laughs> so nothing new here, folks. Just going to do the same thing over again. Just make sure I stay on the correct side of the line. Let me move that out of there. Down to depth. Any questions? Uh, let's see. You ready? Yep. Jose Mejia asked, how do you avoid crushing the fibers on soft woods when chopping away the waste on joints? Sharp, 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 sharp. Um, if I work in maple or oak, my chisel doesn't have to be crazy sharp because it'll still cut. If I cut in soft woods, um, it's just going to crush them, especially when you try doing pine. Um, pine is not a good practice wood. Um, it's cheap, but in all honesty, poplar is not that much more and is a much, much better practice wood. Um, pine is, is not, not very good for practicing. Oop, wrong side of the line, that side. But yeah, it, it all comes down to how sharp is your tool. this before going farther that that and that now we've got these on here and I still need to chop out this middle one the exact same way but these ones on the side we can put them in here and repeat the process but downstroke this way exactly what I was just doing just rotating the board And technically here, I am cross-cutting. So, I mean, technically I should be using a cross-cut saw. Um, however, when it gets down to small teeth like this, anything like 16 PPI and smaller, cross-cut and, and, uh, um, and rip-cut don't make that big a difference. So while I've got it here and clamped down, I'm just gonna hit these two surfaces of the fine file here, clean them up a little bit, rotate it, and do the other side. Yay! Are you ready for another question? Sure. Yeah, what we got? Uh, let's see. Super Cow 1127. Um, do you worry about damaging the bench when you're chopping? No. Oh, here, let me, let me show you. Hang on. We My bench. Um, here, let's do this. <laughs> My bench is all sorts of kinds of beat up and banged up. A bench is not for show. A bench is to work with. And if you really wear out a surface, you plane it down and keep going at it. A bench will not last for multiple lifetimes. If it's used every day, it will eventually need to be replaced. And you'll find a lot of old benches that are really, really beat up. And they were like the last one in that shop before they switched over to all power tools. Um, and then they sat in the corner and got covered with all sorts of finishes. Um, and so they look jet black um, and they're all bent up and, um, if it were in a working shop, it would not have gotten that way. They would have replaced the top or built a whole new bench. Um, it, is a, it is, in technicality, 
a disposable tool. I know that's really going to throw a lot of people off because the bench is like, <gasps> but I mean, in technicality, it is designed to be something that will eventually wear out. Um, but uh, a lifetime or so. It's not like a really short thing. The bench was often something that went with the shop, whereas most of the tools belonged to the person doing the work. Um, so, different thing there. So, um, here, bring this back in. We're going to do the exact same thing we did before. Chop in, pair out. Focus, focus. There we go. So grab the mallet, grab the chisel, stay a little ways away from the knife line. Just go tap, tap, and move over a little bit. Make sure I cut on the right side of the line. <laughs> Usually that's the point that I check is after making the chop of like, oh, maybe I should check. Oh yeah, look at that, I cut on the wrong side. And so on the second one, as I'm paring out a lot of material fairly quickly, I'm down almost halfway. Now I'm going to go into that knife wall, that marking gauge line, put the chisel perfectly vertical, and I'm just going to eyeball it, just to let you see. Oop, knock it over. Um, I could bring in a guide, but the eyeball is actually really good at judging 90 degrees. And eventually your hand's going to learn it. And I can put a square on that, and yeah, it'll come out. And if you do undercut it a little bit, that's not a problem. Um, as long as the front and back walls are 90 degrees, then it's all good. So, flip it over. Repeat the same thing on the other side. What are you doing for time? 28. Okay, good. My test version on this this morning was 20 minutes. So, usually 20 minutes is like perfect which means I'll have a little bit of time for question and answer at the end. Um, I could probably get that down a good bit, but I find that the, these take me a little bit longer than dovetails because they're just slightly different. What's the, is that Super Chat? It's going cranky so cranky. So Alan finally is gracing us with his presence. Alan, again. how's it going? Um, Apparently, his New Year resolution was to be on the Wood by Right Live some more. <laughs> um, <he's laughs> so, don't you have a church service? It says, Happy New Year, White Oak Nation, and then for Sarah's hot cocoa fun. <laughs> What's um, the joke? Why did the candle fall in love? What? Because it found the perfect match. Uh. Ah. <laughs> I should have picked a cornerer one for Alan. <laughs> I you were going to do something like it had a hot flame. But yours is better. Mine, of course mine's better. Right, come in and clean up these surfaces just a hair of the file. And now, for the test of test assistances, do these two come together? And we find out that, well, let's actually zoom in so you can see. But, whoa, let's, um, let's fix that a little bit. Down here. There we go. Do these two actually come together? Are they supposed to come together? That's a great question. <laughs> mm, we're hair tight. One of the nice things about these is you can actually look at it and see where are you tight. Like I can see, can I go together here? Can they go together here? And they should go together in every orientation. Okay, so that orientation, it's really good. Just a hair tight here. Uh, and this orientation, ooh, it's really tight there. So. That one goes in, but that does not. So can I see? Yeah, you are a bit off. So I'm seeing that this is just a hair fat here. Let's put it into this. And I'm going to just hit it with a file. And see if that did it. Oop, wrong way. No. That did not do it. So I can come in this way, in most of the way. I can come in this way, and I'm in most of the way. But it's not going to go in this way. So that means there's probably a problem with this pin. You're good, you're good. Where is the problem at? And the, the, 
the temptation at this point is, oh, I think I see the problem, and so I'm going to hit it. But until you actually find out exactly where the problem is, you're probably going to be messing things up a little bit more. And what I'm seeing is there's a little bit of material on this one and a little bit of material on that one. So i got two spots on that one need to be cleaned up here. So, one, where was the other one? The other one is here. Let's see, how did that work? Hey, oof, it's just a hair on the tight side for what I would like. Not horrible. Ooh, hear that? This is this. A little bit of cracking. Where is that cracking coming from? If you see a hair crack, it'll tell you where it's wide. And it's right there. Okay. So that means that either this face is too big or this face is not big enough. And since this is one in here, let's see what that gave me. Hey, there we go. There, now they are in and down. That is pleasing. That is nice. So we need to pillow these and make them look right. She's snorking at me. Pillow, and so not pillow. <laughs> I'm gonna mark on here, there, and I'm gonna mark on here. And theoretically, those two marks should be the same distance in from the end. I'm going to put my marking gauge on there. And I'm going to slide it up, tighten it down. And then let's check it on this one. And they are. Hey, look at that. So now I can go, let me make sure I'm on camera still. Yep. I can go all the way around each of these legs. And generally, I would just come in with a chisel and eyeball it. But I'm going to do one of these eyeballed and one of them um, more accurate. So you can kind of see both ways. So on this one, I'm going to mark how far down. And I'm going to mark on the top here how far in. And this will give me a 45 degree angle. And I can only do this on the outside of these. So I still have to eyeball the inside one but I can kind of play connect the dots with it on that one. On this one, I'm just going to do this and eyeball it. Any questions right now? Uh, not necessarily related to the topic, but yes. Uh, let's see, Andy Pupak asks, can James make a regular video on gluing up oily woods like cedar, teak, etc.? About what with the woods? Gluing up oily woods. Honestly, there's a lot of myths about gluing oily woods. Um, and really, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, unless they're going to be in exterior use um, and always out in the rain. And in that case, um, your glue is going to be having all sorts of problems to begin with. Um, as long as you clean the wood and you've, you've sanded it, it's fine. Don't, don't worry about it. Um, the, the problem comes with hide glues. They have a little bit of a problem with it, uh, but most PVAs aren't going to have any issue with it as long as there's enough clamping force. Epoxies, epoxies aren't going to have any problem with it at all. Um, and if I have any slight fear about that, it's epoxy for me. Um, and so the myth really comes from the history with hide glue, um, but for most instances, unless you see obvious oil on the surface, it's not going to be a problem. So don't, don't worry about that. Um, so on this one, I'm just going to eyeball it, and I'm going to come in with the chisel and freehand it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here on the corner, and I'm just going to take off little bite by little bite, and I'm skewing the chisel so that it's still pointing up the green. I'm not going to go straight across. If I go straight across it, I'm just going to be tearing them out. But if I come in like this, then I can do that. And this is honestly one of my favorite steps. I enjoy I, this immensely. I was waiting for you to say that. Because it's just 
freehanding and curls. And then you rotate. And I have that one line down the bottom because I can pretty easily eyeball about what 45 degrees looks like. As long as I don't go below that line because that is um, where it runs into the other board. It's a little bit of a heavy bite. If you find yourself getting a heavy bite, don't push harder. Skew it. If you slide the chisel, it'll actually slice the grain a little bit easier. You know, this chisel is a little bit on the soft side after that chopping. And I'm also seeing some lines in the cut. Uh, so when you see that, it's just giving a little bit of resistance. It's time to sharpen. My diamond stones, a little squirt. Coarse, medium. Fine. I could probably just have taken this one to the strop. It's not that bad. Clean that burr. Check. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Oop. And strop it. Yeah, it feels good. <laughs> I'm surprised no one has questioned the uh, Nerf gun in the bottom left oh. corner. <laughs> That is my Nerf gun when we play, and uh, the kids are not allowed to touch it. So it has recently been residing in the shop because we've been having friends over, and they don't want friends to get a hold of it because I've made several modifications to it, and it's a little bit more powerful than I would like them to handle. So <laughs> that one is one you must definitely wear glasses for. But I haven't taken my kids out paintballing yet. Oh, dear Lord. I am looking forward to shooting my son. <laughs> There's three sides. And on these outside ones, I could come in with a block plane and just run across them all. Um, I'd have a little bit harder time with the ones on the inside, but if the block plane is right or if it's a rabbiting block plane, you could very well do that. Here's that one. So we can see. Um, Goes this way. Chisel rolling. See how that pillowing just sticks up a little bit. Is it pillowing or pillowing? Pillowing. Is it I? It's an I. No, it's an E. Careful, your mother's watching even though it's on mute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then on this one, uh, with these lines on here, I can play connect the dot, which is a little bit easier than that. I'm just going from line to line. I'm going to move the camera a little bit closer. I'm not sure if you guys can quite see it. Here, let's do this. There we go. Now you can see the lines on there. So on this one, we'll come in. Like that, two, and this one we get really close to it. You see it's a little heavy bite right there at the end, and so this time I'm just going to slide it sideways and shear off that little bit. And then we're going to go right into that line. And there we go. And so in real time, Looks like that. And this is just, I don't, I don't know why this is so enjoyable, but anytime you get to do freehand chisel work and you don't worry about anything other than just cutting it, it's incredibly enjoyable. Any questions? Yes, let's see. T. Johnson asked, what is the smallest size that you have done? Question mark. One quarter board? Question mark. The what was that last? One quarter board? The smallest Portable. size I had done. I don't know what you're saying. I don't know either. Sorry, are you talking about um, lumber thickness for doing dovetails or something of that nature? Um, comment and let me know. Uh, maybe I'll just answer that one. Let's see. Um, I've done quarter inch dovetails before. Actually, one time I did a box and they were ever so slightly over about an eighth inch. Um, and with the compression of the wood, they were basically finger joints. Um, but 
I tried to give them a little bit of a splay. Um, that was years ago, though. That might make a fun video. Working with thin stock, doing dovetails and eighth inch material. Good thumbnail, too. <laughs> What's next? Uh, let's see. Nicholas Todd asks, I know you probably have a video, but what do you finish your bench with? And are you worried about it being slippery with what you finish it with? Um, I use boiled linseed oil. Uh, the reason being is it's going to get covered with so many other glues and finishes over the years that I don't care if it's protective or not. I don't, I don't protect my bench at all. It's going to get chipped. It's going to be gouged. It's going to be cut. Um, and as I put more finishes on it, it's probably got... In some places on here, it has 40 or 50 coats of boiled linseed oil. Like, there's probably a measurable thickness over here. Um, and and uh, I, I love that. Um, it just adds character to it. Although soon here, I'm going to be refinishing the bench and just planing it all off. It'll be a sad day. Um, what was the second half of that question? Do slippery. No. Um, and I, that's why I don't do any film finish on here. I, a film finish is going to instantly look bad. Um, if you put on a poly um, or something like that, a shellac, where you're actually building up a film on top of it, um, you're just going to be scarring it up, and it's going to instantly look bad. Um, so I, I, I really don't want to mess with that. Um, I could see myself doing Rubio, but I mean, it's going to get coated with so many other finishes eventually that it doesn't really matter. What else we got? Let's see. Last question I have so far. Timothy Mallon, do you have any experience with fuming white oak? And if so, what are your overall impressions of the result? With ewing white oak? Fuming. Oh, um, I've done it a few times. I don't like the look. Um, just not my personal preference. Um, so it's not something I, I do. I, I've, I've experimented with, played with it just to find out that it's not something I like. Um, I, it does give a slightly better contrast to the medullary rays, but it's not for me. Um, I, I also find it to be a bit tedious because um, you're basically dyeing the wood with that and then you can go in through and finish it. Um, and I, If you fume it and then go straight into something like a water-based poly, that has an interesting look to it. Um, but I don't like the look of fuming it and then boiled linseed oil. So I guess that's why I don't use it. So let's see what we got here. Um, make sure I got these together. There we go on that. And so this comes in. Oh, I got some junk in there. Get not the junk in there. And we slide these down in until the pillows just stick up a little bit. And I like that. That's pretty. <laughs> I'll do a clarification on the question asked earlier. The thin stock? Finger joint with a quarter inch board was the smallest size for finger joint. Um... I don't think I've ever done finger joint less than half inch. Um, other than that, the time I was talking about doing working with something close to eighth inch, um, at that point the dovetails basically became a finger joint because you, you just can't put enough of an angle on an eighth inch to make a big difference. Um, but I don't know why you can't go any smaller. Usually the smallest stock I'm going to be working with is half inch unless I'm making something really small. Um, and if I'm making something really small, I'm not going to be doing dovetails. Um, it's usually just going to be glue that help, holds it together. Uh, because when you're putting something together with really small walls, um, you're not making something that's going to be durable. You're making something that is decorative and, and precious. And so having mechanical joinery is not a huge benefit in that instance. In that case, I'm usually going to be doing mitered glues or um, splines or rabbits or something of that nature. Um, just because it's, uh, it's intended to be more decorative. But, yeah, dovetails do look good. Or, I guess, finger joints if you want to do them that small. So, yeah, there's what we have. Um, I kind of like how this came out. Let me focus it a little bit better. Here, back are up. you going to stain it to show if it looks different? Oh, poplar little... doesn't look good finished. No? Okay, no. fine. Oh, then I would... The, the thing with a joint, um, particularly if you're making anything flush, like dovetails, um, they look bad and they look gappy until you glue them up and then clean them smooth. And then suddenly it's like, wow, it doesn't look quite as gappy as I thought. Um, it's amazing what happens when you glue them up and, and finish them. Um, that's why 99% of all YouTube videos that talk about doing a joint, the thumbnail shows them cleaned, finished, and polished. You, you don't generally see them 
unfinished and unglued because they look bad at this, at this point. If you want a good thumbnail, you need to make them look good. And the way you do that is you glue them up and you finish them out. Um, but that takes time. So, yeah. What we got? What time is it? Oh, 46. Wow, that's even faster than I thought. Captain Hoke asked, how close to the edge would you feel comfortable chopping a mortise? I'm looking to make a blanket chest out of three-quarter oak. How close to the edge? Um, let me grab a board and make sure we're talking about this the same way. Um, usually, you don't put a tenon into the face of a board. Um, where is... Here, there we go. Um, tenons are not corner joints. If you do that, then they're a bridle joint. Um, so, like, in this case... Um, on a corner, this is a, um, a bridle joint. Um, so you have the tendon coming through, and the mortise is open on three faces. Um, and so that's the way you're generally going to do um, tendons on a corner joint. Um, tendons are usually in the middle of the board. Let me see, where's my through tendon? Ah, here we go. So here's a through tendon that goes all the way through on the split of the board. Um, and you put that, the general rule of thumb is one third or sometimes as much as the tendon being half the width of the board. So you have a quarter on one side and a quarter on the other. Um, such as if there's a three quarter inch board, you have a three eighths tenon um, and uh, what would it be? Eighth inch and eighth inch wall. Um, so I'd have to see the application you're talking about. Um, because as long as the tenon is going with the grain, you can put it really close to the outside face of the wood. Um, otherwise, you're going to be uh, um, worrying about splitting off. But you're going, if you're going across the grain, that's when you're going to run into issues. And the, you know, generally, in that case, there are better applications than a mortise and tenon. Hmm. Uh, but if you have a specific or want to clarify on that, let me know. Um, otherwise, send me pictures on my email, and I'd be glad to take a look at it. What's next? See, Margaret Outlauder asked, when you make keepsake boxes, which box lid type do you prefer to use? Example, one solid wood top, veneered MDF, frame raised panel, breadboard, end lid, etc. Um, I do all sorts of different, every application can be different, it depends on the look, the look I'm going for. Um, I generally don't veneer MDF. I, I don't like using any MDF in any project. Um, I've just had bad experiences with it, even for something like a, a keepsake box. Um, I, would, I would prefer to veneer a plywood, uh, manufactured plywood, or um, a stable piece of wood um, and try and make the veneers going with it. Um, or have a, a thin piece of wood that, can, um, that doesn't move so much. Um, I try to stay away from framing a solid board um, with expansion and contraction problems. Um, probably the one I use the most is a rabbited top. Uh, let's see, do I have one? Actually, I do have one over here. Um, a rabbited top. <laughs> this is a fun video. This is the video that uh, um, Luke, uh, my videographer, came down. He wanted to shoot a video of someone doing hand tool woodworking. And so he said, hey, I've got a piece of firewood. Can you make a box out of it? Um, and so I made a six-piece box um, for a video with him. And so this was pieces out of uh, uh, firewood. Um, and so it's rabbited sides, but the lid is a rabbited top that then sits on there. I love doing simple rabbited tops. This is a, this is a, a very bad example because we, we cranked this thing out in, I want to say two and a half hours carving and everything. Um, from firewood to this in two and a half hours, um, glue included. Um, it's, it's actually super glued together. Um, and that was almost four years ago. Um, but yeah, that's, that's probably one I do the most, is a, is a rabbited top that just sits there. Um, if you really want to hold it, magnets work well. Um, but yeah, hope that answers the question. <laughs> is that another super chat? It is. Idle Hands Workshop wants to know any spoilers of what we can expect in 2023. Oh, I've been having fun because I put out the short um, this last week asking people what do you want to see. Um, ooh, oh, 
if you really want a spoiler, I've got a fun one. I'm going to show you what's in uh, this bag here in a moment. Let's hide that. Um, so I've got, uh, for Thursday videos, I have um, setting up a scraper plane or a cabinet, uh, cabinet scraper, um, sharpening molding plane irons, um, how to minimize error, um, how to work in small spaces, um, learning resources, in other words, books and podcasts, things of that size, um, calipers. I have actually had quite a few people asking for caliper information. So yeah, I'm going to show a couple different calipers and how I use them. Um, crack filling. Um, I, um, a viewer of the channel sent me um, some hot glue um, crack filler and I've been wanting, I've been playing with that and it's kind of interesting. Um, projects to make. Um, I want to make a strobe box that covers this so you guys don't get the flashing lights. I try and keep it behind Sarah there, but when um, and it's out here, it looks kind of funky. <laughs> <laughs> like to make a box to cover that. Um, oh. A medicine cabinet for Sarah because we need uh, we, our mirror. Um, I'm thinking about making a flute. Um, wooden flute, you know, like an old but, Civil War flute. Are you talking about flute or flute? Flute, yeah, like you, like you play. Off the side. Wait, wait, wait. Um, How did you do your hands? You actually did them the right way. Good How job. long have I been married to you? <laughs> you can always tell someone's not a flute player. They do this. Um, uh, one, I'm thinking about making a, a window. Um, I want to make a new door for my shop because the door lets a lot of sound through, and I thought this would be a cool to do a six-panel door. Um, I've been thinking about making a guitar, um, a six-string acoustic guitar. You know, there's only 365 days this year. <laughs> well, yeah, these are these are what the list of projects that I have that I'm thinking about. Um, I've had a lot of people asking me to do a Dutch tool chest. I, I don't like tool chests. But enough people have been asking me to do that that I might do it and then, like, sell it afterwards. Because um, I have no desire to have a tool chest. <laughs> but, um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, for shorts, I have a whole bunch of fun ones. Um, how to hold a card scraper. What is Yorkshire grit? Um, a carpenter versus a woodworker. Had a lot of questions about that one. Um, how to square and iron. Um, rust protection. Um, and that, that, that's another one I'm going to be doing is the, uh, the um, I've been wanting to do a long-term test on actual rust prevention. Um, scrub plane versus jack plane versus smoothing plane. Um, a double-sided tape and its uses. Um, oh, um, marking gauges, the wheel versus the pin. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to use one of my favorite pet, peaks, pet peeves is uh, planing curls. Do not use these for shipping. These are not good packing. These are about the worst packing you can possibly get. Don't pack things with wood curls. Sorry, I'll get off my work box. <laughs> Um, grain direction, um, how sharp is sharp enough, um, laying a plane on that side that make a fun short one, um, joint types and actually going through a bunch of different joints and how they're used, um, and then apron versus non-apron. And so a lot of those were questions from the short video that came out soon. But uh, Oh, and then I'm, um, very soon here I'm doing the, the six month test on the glue test. And so I'm going to have the yearly video coming out showing that. So it's, I think it's been four years now that these have been gluing up. Um, so it's kind of fun to see how the different glues have held up over four years. And these have been sitting out in my garage. I have like 30, 40 some of these up in the garage. And they sit up in the garage so they're in full expansion contraction from all of the moisture. And it's fun to see how do they last. So yeah, <laughs> the yearly glue test. Um, so those are the things I have coming up. But uh, yes, this. This. Is it very sneaky, sneaky, peaky, peaky? Um, let me switch over to this one. And this is from Reed Tools. Here, I haven't even pulled it out of the bag yet. So they're saying if you, for that Dutch uh, tool chest, you could uh, auction it for charity or something. I could what? Auction it for charity or something. Oh, that, that may very well be. Um, so this is um, the, this is from Reed Plans. Um, so it's a dovetailed chariot plane, um, and this is the one-off prototype playing with old parts he has in the shop. 
Um, so this has, has no comparison to what Reed Platen is. Um, and it's, it's, it's just a fun uh, plane that he put together. But uh, yeah, we're going to be doing something with this. So I don't know if I was supposed to show this yet, but I did. So ha ha ha. <laughs> uh, but stay tuned. That is going to be uh, coming up soon. Um, I, uh, I believe he's wanting to auction that one off for charity. Um, I don't remember. So yeah, fun little chariot plane from replay. Because he actually is, um, he's working with the, the companies doing some of the casting um, to get read planes back into work. And so this is one of the prototypes who's playing with a couple different methods to do it. Um, so it's a fully functional plane, but it's a, uh, the, the read planes pre-prototype. <laughs> Stay tuned. Um, let's see, we've got three minutes left. Uh, Any last questions? We need to do a mom joke. Oh, what do we got? What do you call a zombie who doesn't joke around? What? Dead serious. Dead serious. Oh, it's like dead something. I don't know what dead what is. <laughs> dead serious. Uh -huh. I like it. <laughs> I knew you would. That's why I said it. <laughs> What's next? All right. Two more quick questions. Dennis Mika wants to know, is there a secret to making all four corners and getting a square box? <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the way I normally do it, is I make my dovetails or corners as square as I can make them. But they're going to have a little bit of movement, and oh well. Um, then I make a bottom, and when I make the bottom, I make the bottom dead square. And I make sure that is, is perfectly square. And then when I glue it together, I use the bottom to make sure that the sides are square. Now the problem is if I'm doing a captured bottom where it's in a groove all the way around, I need to leave some space so I can't always do that. Um, and so in that case, when I go for the glue up and I have two clamps this way and two clamps that way and two clamps that way and two clamps that way. Um, then I'm going to come back in with a square and put it inside the box and I'm going to put another couple clamps going corner to corner on whichever corner is longer and I'm going to put clamping pressure corner to corner to then bring it into square. Um, so yeah, like a, a simple box, drawer box, I have a lot of clamps on it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the big thing is that, that last corner to corner uh, because as long as it's glued up square, it will be square. Um, if it's not glued up square, then uh, you're going to have to adjust it afterwards. What's next? Sorry, B squared and I was like, B, oh, uh, I was thinking math. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. No. With, um. Just call me Pythagoras. Yeah, but no, um. I can't think of it now because I'm so tired. Is it neg negative b <laughs> minus the square root of 4ac divided by 2a? Anyways. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, folks, but I sure can smell the smoke. Shut up! <laughs> Something about a sad bee stealing away four air conditioners and it all happened over two apple trees. That's how I remember it. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> your mama wants to know, are you planning on using this kind of joint on something soon? No, no, I don't have. Uh, finger joints are something that I, I very rarely use unless I have that specific aesthetic that I want. Um, because with hand tools, it's, it's just as easy, if not faster, to make a dovetail. Um, so, yeah. I think the correct interpretation of that question was, yes, mother, what would you like me to make? Oh, is that actually? I thought it was someone's the username of your mama. No, you're. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> yeah, I'll make a box to go on top of that end table I gave you a couple years ago. <laughs> oh, all right. Quadratic formula. There Thank it is, you. Yes. I was like, there's a thing that I learned in eighth grade. Well, we're at 9 o'clock. Do we have anything more or do we want to wrap it up? No. Wrap no. Up. Sarah okay, needs cool. to go to bed. Um, I made a plan for what next week is, but I don't remember what it is. So, um, is next week the good? No, we got two more until we're gone. So, yeah. Cool. Well, we'll see you next week. I don't know what it'll be, but we'll all find out together. <laughs> That's scary. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day.